Without this fantastic pill bug, where would the isopod hobby be? Hi, I'm Russ of Aquarium Max Pets, and today's isopod species profile is on Armadillidium maculatum. The most common names for this species are the zebra isopod, the zebra pill bug, or just zebra. It was one of the first species that really opened hobbyists' eyes to the fantastic variation among isopods. This species is known from France and Italy, and it quite obviously gets its name from the contrasting dark grey and white stripes that recall the appearance of the familiar zebras of Africa. This marvelous pattern is thought to be an example of Batesian mimicry. There are pill millipedes in the zebra pill bug's native range that look very similar to it and produce a distasteful liquid that deters predators. The pill bugs do not pack the same punch, but they look like they do, so they're often left alone as well. Even though the common name of this isopod species celebrates its stripes, the scientific species name, maculatum, means spotted. Typically, there are both striped and spotted individuals in a given population, and some are somewhere in between, though with careful selection, strains of this species have been produced that are nearly all striped, or nearly all spotted. This is a moderately sized pill bug. According to Oren's book, Isopod Zoology, adults of this species often measure at about 14 millimeters, but can get up to 17 millimeters. In addition to the wild type, there are several morphs out there. There are spotted individuals, as I mentioned, a type with random patches on it called paradox, high white, like the photos of these lovely specimens that Ashley Nebel allowed me to share with you, chocolate, and perhaps the most striking, the yellow zebra. My yellows came from Rachel at PetPedsInPods.com. Though it may take a while for them to settle in, zebra pill bugs are quite prolific breeders once they get going. This species can produce offspring year-round, and I've never really measured the brood size, but I just find babies basically all the time in my established cultures. New cultures can sometimes take a few months before you notice any offspring. I got my very first culture in the month of June, and I didn't see any babies at all until November. Now this was years ago, but once those manke first appeared, they just never stopped coming. Before we talk about care for zebra isopods, I'd like to thank my patrons at Patreon. Each of my patrons makes a donation that helps keep my channel going and growing. There are lots of ways that your donations help. Some of these contributions go towards improving my recording equipment or testing out ways to improve husbandry for the creatures I keep that I then pass on to you in my videos. It all helps, and the more patrons contribute, the more a little goes a long way. If you'd like to help for as little as one US dollar a month, please click the link at the end of this video or in the description. Thank you again, patrons. Now, let's talk about zebra pill bug care. One to two inches of base substrate with a nice layer of leaf litter on top suits zebra pill bugs just fine. Ventilation should be moderate to high. These isopods need some decent air movement to thrive. Zebras also appreciate a good moisture gradient. They can tolerate some dryness in the enclosure better than some others, but a completely dry enclosure is deadly to zebras, so never let the hydration station dry out completely. For optimal breeding, keep your zebras in the 70s to low 80s Fahrenheit, but they can survive somewhat cooler temperatures as well. They're usually fairly comfortable in the temperature range that humans prefer in our houses. Cork bark or other hides will be appreciated by your zebras. Provide plenty of hiding places near the hydration station, in the mid-zone, and on the dry side of the enclosure, so they can self-regulate. Concerning food, zebra pill bugs are not particularly picky. Any typical isopod food is well received. Squash and other veggies, fish food pellets, supreme isopod chow, it's all on the menu. As long as you follow the typical husbandry for isopods with good ventilation and a moisture gradient, there are no particular care difficulties associated with the hardy zebra isopod. I've been asked if the zebra pill bug makes a good biocustodian in a vivarium. Well, I have tested this species out to some degree in a few vivaria. I seeded a leopard gecko vivarium with zebra isopods, powder blues, and I believe some dwarf purples a few years ago. About a year later, there were lots of zebras in there, along with good numbers of powder blues. A year and a half later, though, there were no zebras and plenty of powder blues. I do think the zebras would have done a lot better in there if they hadn't been outcompeted by the powder blues. I also put some zebras in with my morning geckos. I saw them once in a while, but one day I found the biggest zebra I had ever seen. So yes, I think this species can do well in bioactive vivaria, but it is probably best to use it as the only species of isopod in a cleanup crew in a given vivarium. Armadillidium species can tend to nibble on live plants a lot more than some other species of isopods, so keep that in mind as well. 
I would say that arid and moderately humid vivaria are both possible as long as there is a good moisture gradient and good ventilation. As pet or display isopods, zebras are easily in my top 10 species of pet isopod, and probably even in my top 5. They are very active and visible during the day, much like their cousins, Armadillidium gestroi. I wonder if the relative boldness of these two species has to do with the fact that their coloration is thought to ward off predators. Zebras have hearty appetites, especially once you have good numbers, so watching them feed is lots of fun. They are not particularly skittish isopods either. If you accidentally bump the enclosure while observing them, they might mill around in confusion for a moment, but they will settle down quickly enough. They are also one of the most readily available isopods, and they are very reasonably priced. The only downside is that you might find they breed a little too quickly and easily. In short, this is one of the absolute best options for a pet isopod. You will just have to have a plan for when your herd of zebras begins to look a little overcrowded. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday on all sorts of aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Feel free to share, rate, comment, or even buy an Aquarimax Pets isopod t-shirt right under this video in the YouTube merch shelf. Oh, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for notifications all so you don't miss my next video.